Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my Florida drive-by. I hope everybody's doing pretty good. Um, it is the 7th of October 2015. 74 degrees. We're getting our uh, cool season. What are we going to say? It's, it's just about right now. Very little humidity or anything out right now. It's really, it's, it's, it feels great outside right now. Um, 74 degrees, and uh, it's nice. About 9 19 in the morning, and uh, today is actually Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Thursday. And uh, I want to start uh, my drive by and uh, say a few things. Uh, first of all, this is going to be about uh, custom guns, and in particular, probably Glocks because so many people have them. I wanted to bring it up and um, discuss uh, some of the customizations you can do on clocks. Now, there's a lot of companies out that lot make a lot of custom stuff, but a true custom gun is not a cookie cutter gun. And what I mean by that, some people think you know, I mean, and it's custom, but it's cookie cutter. Um, like, if we'll go out to some companies like Lone Wolf, I'm going to say Lone Wolf because they make so many things for clocks. Now, you can go ahead and buy a slide that's engraved. You can buy a compensator that's engraved. You can buy a totally different frame. You can buy mag wells. You can buy springs. You can buy barrels. You could actually replace every single thing on your clock and make a custom clock. But is it a custom clock? Well, it's, I don't think it's a clock anymore, number one. And a lot of those customizations you do on there don't really improve the, you know, the way the gun functions at all. They make it look good. You know, I'll agree there. Myself, I like when somebody takes just a regular clock and modifies what they have. Um, and then I'll, and I'll put it this way. Let's say you buy a Glock uh, 22 or whatever. And, you know, maybe you, uh, you titanium coat the barrel and pour it. And then you flute it. Um, you keep your stock barrel. Maybe you uh, pour it. You know, get some holes made in the slide. Get some holes made in the barrel. Make it look, and I mean make it look tasteful. Don't look like just somebody rushed, rushed out. And did it. Uh, maybe put some, you know, different stuff on it. And then if you want, you know, make some accents on it. Uh, a magwell wouldn't be bad as long as it was done tastefully and it wasn't too big. And try to keep like most of the inter internal parts in stock. You know, I think it, I think it looks a lot better. Uh, it, it doesn't deter from the gun as much. And when you're going to do the gun, the sights are something really to pay attention to because every single set of sights are black, which to me kind of sucks because you go ahead and either get a nice uh, engraved barrel or engraved slide or you know, you dial it up real nice. Everything else looks really nice except those ugly set of sights on the gun. So uh, if at all cost, if you can, you might not be able to, um, you know, get some sights and get them coated or get them plated. I mean, it's not that hard. You can contact the manufacturer of the sights. And 99% of the time, they will uh, sell you a bare set of sights without the, without, uh, the uh, tubes in them or without, you know, without the tritium tubes or the fiber optic tubes. I did that. I contacted uh, Trigicon and I bought a set of, uh, set of pressure sights. And I drilled the tubes out cleaned it out real good, and I uh, had it plated or coated titanium, and once once I get them back, I'm going to send them to, to Georgicon, and they're going to put the lamps back inside of them, they're going to install them, so I'll have a nice looking set of sights, but, you know, it's up to you, but yeah, do it tastefully, because then it looks a lot better, and then it's worth more too, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of cookie cutter companies out there that sell a lot of active markets. You can basically rebuild your gun, 
with just cookie cookie cutter parts, but I, I just don't think they look that great with the cookie cutter stuff. But you know, that's my opinion. I'd like to know your opinion. What looks better? A, a gun that you just bought every single aftermarket part and put them on there, or you bought some of them and you did some of the modifications yourself and you made them, you know, look kind of cool and kind of neat. Um, a lot of people come out, you know, they'll say, well, hey, if this gun is the best looking gun you could ever buy, wrong, eh, not. And uh, of course, when you change it around that much, your reliability of the gun is going to go to the shit tube. Now, I don't mean it might not be more, a little bit more accurate. And I don't think, you know, I, I don't mean that it won't, it won't be, it won't work. I mean, it's just that if, if you uh, take that gun and modify it too much, it's not going to be as reliable. No gun is, uh, as the, you know, the factory one. But I'd like to hear what you think. Uh, Modification, uh, you know, what what mo modification, I guess the name of this uh, drive-by is, what type of modifications, cookie cutter ones or true modifications. And true modifications on a gun are very difficult to make, to make it look really unique. That's a hard thing to do. But I think if, you know, uh, and you can do it for a fairly a low amount of money, but you really got to plan it out, you know, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. But thanks a lot for tuning into my video. Have a nice day and uh, stay safe. Thank you.